And we're off. It's late at night. I have to be in Winnipeg tomorrow morning to pick up a load. So I'm bobtailing out to the yard, gonna grab our trailer that we need and get everything ready. So that first thing tomorrow morning, I'm ready to pick that load up. It's going down to Fargo, North Dakota. So I'm hoping I can get loaded and delivered in Fargo early enough tomorrow that uh, I'll have enough time in the day to get going on what's next. I don't know what that is yet. I'll find out tomorrow whether or not it be a reload from the US or if I come back empty. Fargo is about a four hour drive from here. So it's not that far of a run. It's just a shorty. We'll see what happens for now. I'm just getting myself all prepared and ready. It's gonna be a good week. Wait, are we are we filming? Yes, we are. Uh -huh. All right, there's a trailer in the yard. Its number is two, five, and four. It is ours. Two, five, four. And that's the trailer I've got to take into Winnipeg in the morning. I'm just gonna hook onto it now, get it all ready to go and sleep right here. I think it's empty. They didn't tell me it'd be loaded. I'm supposed to take it into Winnipeg and load it. So it would make sense if it was empty. They just didn't clarify like, hey, it's empty trailer 254. They just said trailer 254, hook onto it, bring it into Winnipeg, put something on it, go to Fargo. Aye, aye, Captain. That's 540. All I know is it'll be a flatbed of sorts. It will not be a box. What's this one? That one's dirty, but it says 110. Trailer 110. This one says trailer 103. Alrighty, alrighty. 254, 254. Where art thou? 543? Not for me. 104? Not for me. 331, 333, 519, 401, 125. I don't think it would be in that yard back there. But we'll keep that in mind if we don't find it anywhere else. We will uh, go and check that out. Okay, it's not in that lineup. We'll check this lineup. 254, where are you? Trailer 118. Trailer 114, but that is red tag. That means we don't take that one. It needs something fixed on it. Trailer 524. Wait, that wasn't it, was it? No. 254. 254. 254. 112. Come on, don't tease me like that, universe. Come on. How about you? What are you? 409. I don't know if it's a step deck or if it's a flatbed. 113. I think it's a rental. I don't think it's one of our trailers. Because if it's one of our trailers, I know if it's a flatbed or not because our, our flatbeds don't have any letters after the number. But like this one here, this is, a, this is a step deck. So it says 115D, which means it's a drop deck. And if it says DT, that means it's a drop deck triaxle. Well, it's not back here. Huh? Oh, I'll go check that lineup over there again, and if it's not there, then I'll go back there as a last resort. It's gotta be here somewhere. I'll find it. The load gods said it was here, and the load gods never lie. Never. Maybe it's out here somewhere. There's trailers everywhere. Must be the weekend. We need a bigger yard. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? 503, 502, 111, all right, 111. Found it, 254. They left it right out here in the open so it'd be easy for me to find. And this is why I didn't recognize the trailer number. This is a roller trailer. I don't pull these that often, but uh, Looks like I'll probably be loading up something that's going to roll right off. 
I kind of like that because then when I get to my delivery point, I don't need to wait for people to come and uh, unload me. I literally, this whole deck just tilts up and I can uh, unlock these rollers and the freight just <laughs> rolls right off. I have a couple of videos of me delivering with these trailers if you want to go check them out. We're fat today. Not heavy or weight wise, we're just wide. Taking up a lot of space. These are wall panels, they're going down to Fargo, North Dakota. Ah oh, yes, it's hot today. Just like yesterday, just like tomorrow. It's not even summertime yet and I'm not complaining, I'm glad. I'll take this over the cold any time of the year. Okay, so I stopped here to grab a coffee, tinker with my beacons a little bit. My beacons weren't working right. Uh, I'm gonna have to replace them soon. I already got some uh, lined up. They're gonna be the flat LEDs. They're gonna look a lot better and they're gonna be brighter. They're gonna match, they'll be clear LEDs so they'll match the rest of the lights on the truck. Oh boy, now that I wanna go, the parade is coming to town. All right, everybody, wait for the parade. Come on, buddy, some parades can go fast. You don't all have to be slow. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. He's, he's doing all right. You don't want to go too fast through the truck stop. Okay. Oh, and he's gonna stop there. What in the world, what in tarnation's going on? I don't want to get out of here. I'm going this way. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I tightened my straps while I was here as well. Oh, there's another parade member coming. I gotta hurry up and get out of his way before he makes this corner. There we go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Thank you very much. Too far to go. This load has not been cleared at customs yet, so uh, hopefully by the time I get there it will be. If not, we'll have to wait a little bit. Don't want to wait too long. I need to get unloaded today yet. coming this way I'm not gonna cut them off I could but that would just be evil and I'm not an evil man if I was I'd be a politician some some I should clarify not all politicians are bad there are some that are good but the ones that seem to keep winning are not <laughs> okay there we go let's go maybe we can change that soon right there has to be a balance. very heavy. 
cargo. I believe I brought these wall panels here. Wow, these things are coming up fast. So we brought wall panels here for the building that's already completed there. That one's done. And then wall panels for the one they're just finishing up there. And I guess these are for another new one. Approaching wow. destination in 200 meters on the right side. So yeah, these buildings on the right here. This one standing, this first one here, I delivered some of the wall panels for that one. And then the one just behind it there, where it's got the zoom boom up to the top on the roof there, delivered wall panels to that one. Looks like they have another one built in the back there yet. I gotta turn right into here. So I'm about 11 feet wide, 11 and a half feet, I think. I'm a little careful getting in here. Wow, this is all paved now. This was all gravel last time I was in here. Yeah, that building on the right. I helped build that. I delivered the stuff for that. Some of it. Oh boy, I hope I'm in the right place. I think I am. Yes, it's got to be the right place. Get around this tight corner here. Empty trailer once again, and full tanks of fuel down here in Fargo. Is this going to stay there? It's kind of loose, isn't it? I better tighten this up. hot out there today obviously i wouldn't usually take the time to do that parked in front of the pumps you know me trucker josh don't park in front of the pumps don't park in the pumps well i do have common sense which is not so common anymore these days so i should say i have uncommon sense there's nobody here you saw it fuel lines are all empty there's no one behind me and i'm right here with my truck so if someone pulls up behind me first of all they have to fuel but if i'm in the way i'm literally right here beside the truck and I just move it's still usually best just to go find a parking spot real quick, obviously, but you do it too. I'm not holding anybody up. If the pumps were busy, there's no way I would do that. No way. Gotta use that uncommon sense. Not everything is black and white. Some things depends on the situation, right? Man, is it hot here air conditioning where are you why are you turned to oh there you are Woo! oh hit me like a freight train right in the face ah, right in the kisser that's nice all right let's get out of here before it gets busy lights are on lights are on giggity giggity let's go so now my tanks are full of cheap juice the dollar, uh, after all conversions and discounts, pump price here for me was uh, $3.699 US per gallon. So $3.70 US per gallon. That equals out with the conversion rates today of $1.31 Canadian per liter. The price up in Canada, I believe last I saw on the way down was $1.699, $1.70. May have gone down a little bit though. Uh, I haven't looked at it and I forgot I forgot to look at it today when we were there. You can probably go back in my video and see it when we were there. But uh, it's cheaper here, that's for sure. this time of year it's 7 30. look how high that sun is in the sky 7 30. so in winter time we would be on daylight savings time or whatever whichever way it goes winter time uh it would only be 6 30 right now but it would definitely be pitch black completely dark sun would be long gone 
bothering Australia. But look at this. 7.30, sun's still way up in the sky. Coming up on the longest day of the year real soon. Actually, when you're watching this, it's probably pretty much the longest day of the year. Or it's coming up real soon for you anyways. June 21st, summer solstice. One of my favorite days of the year. I really like the sunlight and I only get it six months of the year. So I savor it. I wish it wouldn't even set. I gotta go further north for that though. Our Northern Territories in Canada, they get sunshine 24 hours a day. I'm a little jealous. Same thing with Alaska up north. Because Alaska's right next door to our territories. I just couldn't deal with it in wintertime when it's 24 hours of dark. That would be too much for me. I wish, I wish a lot of things, but you know, I wish I was like super rich and I could have like a, a winter home in Florida. So when winter got you know, really cold, I could just go stay in Florida for a few months until it got nicer. Maybe have another vacation home in Australia. Actually, wait. No, they got all kinds of critters that want to kill me there. I'd love to go there. It's just, I'm going to have to... One of the locals will have to guide me on what wants to kill me and what doesn't. Because I'm pretty sure 99% of the animals there want to kill me. still want to go visit. That's on my bucket list. I want to go visit Australia. Australia is sort of the sister country to Canada. I've said this before. They're just Canada. They're just upside down. They're on the other side of the world, only in the other hemisphere. Like exactly opposite of us. So now that it's summertime here, it's wintertime there. Except Australia, they don't really get wintertime. That doesn't count. You, you don't get a claim you get winter, time, winter down there. No, that doesn't count. Our winters are way worse. But their summers are just brutally hot from what I hear. One day I'd like to go visit. I, I think it uh, looks like a beautiful country with great people and so similar to us. Wow, I almost hit that bird. Do you see that? A little daredevil. You know, if I ever do go to Australia though, I gotta find someone who drives a truck down there and I gotta ask him. If I can drive a road train. I want to I want to drive a road train. I'd love to go on a cross country trip from like Sydney to Perth. So that's like all the way or from Perth to Sydney. One way or the other, like right across the outback with a, with a, a road train. That'd be so cool. What an experience though, right? I don't know when that would ever be able to happen. I got responsibilities here in Canada, but oh, if the stars ever align, like I say, Lots of dreams inside my head. I like to bring them to the forefront of my brain every now and then so I remember. When the opportunity presents itself, hopefully I'll be able to jump at it. But that won't be for a while. Maybe when I'm older and my kids are older. And... Eh. We'll see. The Fiji Islands, that, aren't they close to Australia? Fiji? Is that an island? Fiji? My wife wants to go to Fiji. It's expensive. I checked. My wife wants to go to Fiji. We're going to Fiji. I think that's close to Australia. Maybe we can hop on over and just quickly dip into Australia a little bit. Since we're spending all that money anyway. You guys ever looked up how much a vacation to Fiji costs? Woo! They better, it better be an open bar 24 hours a day. Like on the house. Like, all-inclusive. They better have golden plates that they serve my free steak on. Better get a free boat rental every day as I go boating. <laughs> One of these days, she wants to go, we're gonna go. I think it'd be fun. It looks pretty cool. First, we gotta buy a house, though. Now I get a new house.
So we're going to drop this trailer here and I have to bobtail over to a small town called Brunkild, Manitoba. A little bit west of here. There's a loaded trailer there waiting for me. I'm going to hook up onto that and tie it down. If I remember correctly, this stuff that I'm picking up is really hard to tie down. It's a lot of tiny, small, very light aluminum pieces that could fly off at any time. So you got to make sure you tie everything down just right. And you can't tie it down too tight because then you'll bend it and damage it. You don't want to do that either. So it should be fun. So let's get rid of this trailer and uh, head on over there. It's been a long day. Winnipeg shut down the south perimeter. They're doing uh, construction there, building an overpass for St. Mary's. Thank God, an overpass. Uh, you can see here on the right, there's the detour for the Trans-Canada now, our interstate for my American friends. Trans-Canada, the one highway east to west across Canada. All commercial traffic traveling east to west goes down that perimeter. So God help all the truckers that aren't familiar with Winnipeg. You gotta go through the city now, guys. At least they, they have signs. Don't follow the GPS. Whatever you do, if you come into Winnipeg, never follow your GPS. Ask a local how to get where you're going because nothing makes sense in Winnipeg. That's my advice for you. None of the roads make sense. It's like six or seven like cities that grew into one. And as they were growing towards each other, they didn't communicate and they didn't city plan together and once they bumped into each other they just sort of made it work and connected some of their roads i'm in the left lane because i've got to turn left up ahead if you're wondering this is st anne's avenue it's i'm guessing the detour signs are probably going to take me up to bishop grandin and we'll go west from there but guys who don't know winnipeg if they don't follow these detour signs they're going to get themselves in in a bit of a pickle makes karen's all like messed up I guess I didn't have to be in the left lane this early, you know? My turn is quite a ways up ahead. But yeah, closing down the south perimeter around Winnipeg, that is a big deal. That is a big deal. But at least they're doing it at night, right? Well, it's like, uh quarter after 10 at night right now hopefully by morning rush hour they'll have that highway open or it's gonna be chaos with big trucks coming through Winnipeg here absolute chaos I'm bobtailing right now so I mean it's practically like driving a big car there was one driver who had pulled over after the detour I tried to get a hold of him on the CB but once again this is Canada no one has their CBs on CB radios are not very popular in Canada. Mostly just the old school drivers. In 600 meters, turn left on Boulevard Bishop Grandin, RT-165. To be honest, I didn't use my CB radio for years and years. I never had one in here because no one uses them up here. It's kind of pointless. Even that driver who was all confused there, I tried to reach out to him on the radio and said, hey, don't worry, bud, follow me or follow the signs. If you lose me, follow the signs. It's clearly marked. You'll be okay. It's all truck routes. Boulevard, Bishop RT-165. I didn't have his radio on. Didn't respond anyway, so... I tried. I decided to uh, put my radio in here once I got this truck. I thought, ah, it's time, you know. It's time. I've driven without one for, for long enough. This is Bishop Grandin. Okay, and you decided to turn red on me. That was not very nice. That was not very nice. This guy's got his high beams on in my face. That's not very nice either. Look at this guy. Right in my face. All right, so I just got here. It's pretty dark already. Just hooked up under it. I gotta hook up the lines yet and put my tarp somewhere on the trailer. But this is my load. Let's go see if we can see it better from the other side. Okay. So that's what we're working with. Let's get to work. I want to tie this down quick. Well, I found a spot at the Flying J uh, card lock in Portage La Prairie. And I'm exhausted. It was a long day. I used up pretty much my full 16 hour day on my Canadian hours of service. So 
to sum up the day, we started at our yard near Winnipeg, grabbed our load in in Winnipeg, tied it down, and flagged it and tag, tagged it and flagged it, flagged it and tagged it. It was a wide load anyway. Took that down to Fargo, unloaded it, came back empty to our yard, dropped that trailer, bobtailed over to Bronkild, grabbed this trailer, it's triaxle flatbed I have behind me, you saw it. It's got a bunch of uh, aluminum and steel. Uh, I think they're, uh, well, it's, it's for building like outdoor farm buildings, right? Uh, tied that all down and I got an hour down the road to Portage now. Now I have two and a half, two to two and a half hours to go tomorrow yet. They want this delivered before noon. It's gonna be close. I only have to stop for eight hours before I can start moving again. So uh, I don't wanna waste any time. I wanna get back there and get as much sleep as I can. So we'll start from right here in the morning. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me this far. Please go down below my video on YouTube. Just make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that that uh, bell is hit so that you get notified when my next video goes live. And let me know down below what is the best time and in what time zone to release my videos. When do you think is the best time? Like early in the morning, midday, or evening? I find I get the most engagement in the evenings. But if I post it in the mornings, it's pretty slow engagement. But in the evenings, it picks up again quite a bit. So I don't really know. In the end, the, the engagement's the same. But what, what works best for you? Let me know down below in the comment section what time. Make sure you uh, let me know what time zone you're talking about too. I live in central time zone, just to give you a frame of reference. So if you say like 6 p.m. central time, that makes a lot of sense to me. Because that's where I'm from. But if you're in the Pacific time zone and you say 6 p.m., well, I'm going to assume you're talking central time because that's that's where I'm from. <laughs> and if you're in Australia, I, I don't know what time zones you use there. And if you're in Europe, I don't know your time zones either. But I can Google it. I can Google it. As long as you let me know what time zone it is, I'll Google it. I'll figure out where you're at and what time it is here in North America. But yeah, what, what, what would be the best time for you? I'll leave it there. See you tomorrow. Take care.